Hello, good evening, and uh, good to see you here. Uh, tonight, I decided to go with uh, KSP again. So, uh, the project for tonight will be to build a, a relay, uh, radio relay on a class E, which has been uh, in orbit for a while. So, we go to the somewhat busy tracking station. And the class E is right there. So it's in a. Let's see, is that the class E? No, that's not the class E, actually. The class E is right there. I managed to get it into a circular orbit after uh, emptying it out completely. So uh, there's nothing on it, no resources whatsoever. We can have a quick peek at it. And there it is. It's nice and big, but as you can see, all the resources are gone now. Everything is uh, has been used to uh, to get it where it's at, where it's at right now. So we go back to the space center and we'll start to build our first ship to go there to uh, start building the uh, the radio relay. All right, so. Start with a lander can and uh, put the grabbing unit on it so that we can uh, attach it. I want a probe core since this will actually be flown by an engineer. So then we have uh, the ability to use SAS, which is always handy. And this thing wants to return as well, so we will need some uh, some parachutes. Let's have a look. Where are they again? Utility, I think. Yep, there we go. So we'll put two radial mount parachutes on it. Right there. Yep. Let's move that about a bit. I quite like the way that looked. Yeah, I think. Put it like that. Yeah, that looks better. Leave it like that. Okay, so that's part one. And now we need a heat shield. So we go to thermal. I think that's a bit small. So we'll actually put a two and a half meter heat shield on there. There we go. Need all the ablator though, so we'll half that. That's a little bit less weight to carry, and uh, the small decoupler. There we go. Oh, that doesn't look too good. It doesn't look good at all. Uh, let's see. Put a big one on then. Uh, that's better. Still not great, but it's better. So that's the part that will return to uh, to Kerbin. Now we need some place to uh, store some stuff, so we'll use a container from KAS, uh, or KIS, I always forget which is which. Let's have a look, so in there we need to put some stuff. Uh, let's see, was that with coupling or structural? We want one of these. Let's see if that will fit. That fits. So that's good. And just to be sure, we'll also put in a electric wrench screwdriver. So we have something to put it on with. We can also put that in the uh, in the landing can inventory. Actually, just to be sure, we take a spare. You know, they're small. If you drop them, they just go flying about. So like that, so close that, close that, so now we have what we need to attach, and since there is some space, we can probably put some more stuff in there, so we will actually try to bring a docking port, yep, that will fit, we can attach, I don't know if we can surface attach that, so we'll take two of these, so this will we will attach to the uh, 
to the asteroid and we will make one as well with a docking port so this should work should We've done this before but that was an older version of KSP so I'm not sure if it still works but we'll see alright so uh, let's see we need fuel to get there so let's have a look what this will do with a poodle how much delta V is that I don't know if that's enough. Let's take one size higher. So we will go to that tank. There. Yeah, well, that should be plenty. Alright, so we have this. Um, don't think this looks very nice like this, so maybe we should actually put a uh, fairing around that. Then we can put the fairing just below the Coupler. We'll take the two and a half meter one. We'll, let's see. Become yellow. There we go. It's yellow. There we go. Can we do it like that? Yes. Close it. There we go. Of course, we also need power. And I forgot to put RCS in. So let's for now we'll put that back on in a minute we need the RCS to dock and we need uh, electricity so we don't uh, so we keep maneuverability so we'll start with the RCS tanks let's see let's just grab a couple of these let's put them on the side somewhere put them on the heat shield maybe. What's up, Rob? Can't behave? Uh, let's have a look. Am I sound too soft? Hang on. I can do that. Give me a minute. How's it like this? Better? Is it better? Uh, yep, I can turn the in-game music down. Give me a minute. Uh, hang on. How's that? Is that better? Can turn it down more if, uh, if it's not good. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right, where was I? Uh, RCS, right? Yep, that was it. So we will put some RCS on. Uh, let's just take these and put them. Put two of them on. The tank there. We need some power. We won't be going very far, so we don't need huge power pan uh, solar panels. We'll just take these and we will put a couple on. We can probably jam them on here. Let's see if it's four should be enough. Way enough. There we go. Okay, so that's done. Um, let's have a look. Thinking of it, it's my own KSP music that's interfering. Why, thank you. Make me mess my settings up. Just because you've got your own volume up. That's nice. Ah, uh, batteries. Let's see, where should we put those? We'll just put two batteries on. That should be enough. We'll put those there. Let's just hope that stuff survives the ascent. Yep, that was fine. Let's push those in a little bit. There we go. That looks better. I'll push those in a little bit. Okay, now we need command and control. 
RCS thrusters. I'll put two there. And I'll put four there. Yep, that should do the trick. That should do it. Alright, so we have the stuff we need to attach. Two radial attachment points, one docking port. We have a way to get back, so we have a heat shield. We have uh, parachutes, so that's okay. We have power, we have batteries, we have RCS, and we have the grappler to attach to the uh, to the asteroid, so this should be fine like this. We'll build up the fairing again. Uh, fairing staged, yeah, that's fine. Build fairing, so let's see where, yep. We need the cross section, yep, there we go. And then we can close that up. So, there we go. So the pod's in there. That should take care of most of the air resistance. We will have some air resistance from this area, but that's fine. Uh, we need an antenna, because otherwise the whole thing still won't do jack. So we will put... We should put four. Oh, who the fuck cares? We'll put four. And let's see. Crew's fine. Staging. Number one, I want the antennas on there, extend. I want those on there, extend. All right, so now we just have to push button number one, the antennas will come out, and the solar panels will deploy, so that's fine. We need not a pilot, we want an engineer, and now we need to boost this into orbit. So, another decoupler, big one. There we go. Uh, let's put a fuel tank on and let's start with a skipper. This isn't that heavy. Let's see. 1.21. I don't like this though. Uh, let's see. We'll put a different engine on. A mainsail. So need some more control ability. So we'll put SAS. And see where do we need that? I don't think we need it for this. The ship isn't that big. But it might be useful for the booster. Yeah. Put that there. When in doubt, add more fuel, so we'll add one more tank. How much does that give us? 27. at 3,000 to get into orbit, so we need about 34, so that leaves us 2,000 for that one. We need about 1,000 to get out there. Let's see. It's tight. Might make it, but it's tight. Let's, let's try this ship. We can always add another tank if it's not enough. as it is. So that's it. It's not pretty, but it'll do the job. We'll add some launch clamps. There. Stage, stage them together with the engine. We'll do the same here. And this is with the decoupler that's... that's with the parachute decoupler. That's no more use. Well, I'll leave it there. I'll stage it manually. Um, let's see, and we'll call this uh, the constructor, I just have no idea for a name right now. Save it. Okay, so we have an engineer on board, yep, he's got tools, yep, so we, uh, we're going to launch this puppy. I've been doing a lot of manual launches, so I am actually going to uh, take it easy this time. And I'm going to be using Gravity Turn, which is a really nice mod for this. So, there we go. And now we get to view the ride up. Which shouldn't be a, a real 
issue with the uh, the power that uh, that the engine has. We're probably going to go too fast and quick anyway with this. Let's get Carable Engineer up and look at the vessel parameters. There we go. Put that up here. So this stage has. 2,000 delta V left, so that will get us nicely up there. Where is it? There. Yeah, Gravity Turn is uh, <laughs> really a nice mod. It's uh, very useful. I actually think that if you do uh, launches with it, you know, they, you can use MechJeb if you want, but uh, <laughs> I prefer this. This is... Uh, really cool. Basically what it does is you, uh, where is it, hang on, you give it some parameters, where you want to go, how fast you want to start to turn, so we want to start to turn at 100, turn angles 10 degrees, and then we have the hold AP time, so basically it holds your apoapsis at 50 seconds. So basically you're always pushing your apoapsis forward 50 seconds. And it does that until the minimum uh, power it can set, which is in there somewhere, uh, is reached, and then it starts to push the apoapsis forward. So you could, if you, if you build a rocket that's halfway decent, uh, it will uh, it will get it into orbit. So, night launch, and it's going nicely for now. I probably could have used less fuel, but, you know, for now this works. As you can see, it, it constantly tries to keep the apoapsis at 50 seconds. And if you have a trust-to-weight ratio of about 1.3, it's, uh, it's actually easy to keep it there. It will do it without any trouble. because we'll be through most of the uh, drag anyway. And then it's, well, you know, it also weighs something, so we lose some weight. Okay, we should have stage separation in, oh yeah, not that long, 10 seconds maybe. Next stage takes over, and we're going to dump the fairing. There we go. And since we're nearly into space, we stand by on the solar panels and the antenna. Okay, there we go. Antenna out, solar panels out. Oh yeah, of course we don't have MegJep on here, so we'll have to do it manually, which is fine. There we go, so add a maneuver. Oh, come on. That's 80, 79, that's fine. Okay, and what I really like about this probe core, turn SAS on, turn maneuver on, and it just aims towards the maneuver. So I only have to uh, do the power.
if you uh, if you have MechJab uh, on the craft, it will actually also do the uh, the circular circularization burn. So then you really don't have to do anything. But I didn't put MechJab on here. Not today. There we go. That's good enough. We uh, have uh, easily reached base, so how much delta V have we got left? 2.2 2. 2 thousand, and then we want to go to Bob, set his target, which Bob is outside of Mun orbit, so it's going to be about a 900 delta V burn to get there. And let's put Bob at about 2 o'clock. That should be about right. Now we put the mo maneuver node there. We can actually put this up. There we go. That should get us pretty close to Bob. Yep, I told you, Bob is pretty far away. There we go. All right. Let's see. Not entirely good. So, let's fine-tune that. Twenty-five kilometers. I think that's pretty okay. We can still adjust a bit there. Node in two minutes, so that's also good. Turn the ship to the node. Burn is forty-five seconds, so about twenty-three seconds in, we start burning. enough. Let's have a look. We are 110 out. We'll put a maneuver node on the descending node and see if we can make that a little better. Let's right click there so we can keep seeing the, the distance. That's not helping. So how about that? There we go. 20, 19, 17, well, ah, hang on, that's it. So now we go with this one. 8.3, 8.2. Nope. 0.3, 6.8. Okay, 0 0.3. I think that's uh, that's pretty good. And it's only a 1.3 meter per second correction. Very nice. All right. Add an alarm for the node. One minute. Add. Otherwise, we have to do so much. Keeping an eye on the times and everything. So, let's not do that. 
Okay, 22 minutes to the node. I love Kerbal Alarm Clock. I'd be lost without it. Or a lot of Kerbals would be lost without it. Close alarm. Alright. Well, this should be a rather easy burn, so we'll probably mess it up. RCS on there. Just a little bit of RCS to uh, try to get it as accurate as possible. We are 3.1 kilometer intersection. Uh, let's see. Let's turn prograde. See if we can make that a little smaller. so that up is up. Mind you, I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm going to try it anyway. Turn RCS on. Let's see if I push that. That's more. If I go back at it, uh, 1.2. That doesn't help anything. Up, down, no. 1.2 it will be. I'm fine with that. So we add an alarm. Close this target. In one day, five hours, uh, but I do want some leeway because I need to plan the burn. There we go, five minutes and alarm. So basically, five minutes before we uh, zoom by this thing, we uh, will actually uh, get the uh, Kerbal alarm clock to wake us up. So, let's go. Put that to target. Three hours, two hours, one hour. Please stop. All right, five minutes, four minutes. All right, so what we do is we have, this is pointing straight towards the target. This is pointing straight away from the target. What we are actually going to do is point retrograde because we need to match our speed with that thing which is right there 94 kilometers out and closing at 300 meters per second so that's uh, pretty fast it's right there and what we want to do is basically match our speed right there and it would be about 326 so 320 uh, 326 that way. Ah, what? I'm not gonna even going to try. I'm just going to do it manually. Uh, 300. How long is that to burn? 45 seconds for 1300. So close to about a quarter of that. I'm guessing. Yep. So about uh, 12 seconds. So we need to do this six seconds before the closest approach. Which is... 3 minutes 55 from now. It's going to be an interesting one. Let's get a little closer. Fifty kilometers to go. That's already a break a bit. There we go. Close up a bit more. No point in zooming past it.
also no point in taking an hour to get there. Class E, which weighs a lot less now than it did when I caught it. Okay. sunny side. In case you're wondering what mod that is, that's Nathud. We'll harm the claw. Yes, on. Let's see. There we go. Let's keep an eye on the arc amount of monoprop we've got. I don't want to run out, because then its mission failed. flat piece of the asteroid to uh, attach things to. <coughs> I actually think... Let's skip to the asteroid for a sec. Mm, I don't know. I'm not sure yet. speed. So we target the center of mass, but we really, right now we don't have to do it because we're not pl planning to move the thing, but when you're moving uh, the asteroid you basically want to target the center of mass so you don't spin uncontrollably when you ac accelerate the thing or decelerate the thing. Okay. How is that side looking? Well, I guess we can put it there. So this will be the first part it's going to go on there for the uh, relay station. Okay, put fine controls on. Try to get that as centered as possible. Okay, basically you want to have these two 
as close to each other as you can. Just line them up to get that to work. Reduce speed. I think this should work. There we go. It didn't bite. Okay, go. Oh, it did bite. There we go. We have docked. All right. So now we have one craft, which is basically our little shuttle thing, and the rock. So now the fun actually starts. Let's turn RCS off. Uh, do we have sunlight? Let's see. I think we are actually using power like this. So let's uh, change our orbit a little bit. Turn that to orbit. I think if we go... Let's see, where is the sun? Sun's right there, so if we point retrograde we should get to the sun. I'm going to turn RCS on for that because that's going to cost some power. So it cost some work there. There we go. It's going to take a minute to do. Basically, that small uh, ship is rotating a 100-ton uh, piece of rock, which was, I think, 1,200 tons? I'm not sure. Basically, the whole content of the rock was used to get it where it is now. So is that working for us? That's really not working for us. I should have put it the other way. So we turn around again. Sorry about that. Just take a few seconds. So again, I added the probe core because uh, Halbury there is an engineer and he wouldn't know how to do that. And I don't feel like doing that all manually. You're leaving, Rob. Have a good evening, man. There we go, now we can actually see what we're doing. No, you're not. You're saluting. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for the salute. I apologized. Yeah, it does happen once in a while. Not often, but it does happen. Alright, so now we are actually turning uh, the ass end of the ship towards the sun so that we keep power and uh, we actually have some light to, uh, to do the work in. And I'm thinking about putting it, putting the parts right there. Maybe put one part there and the docking port there. We'll have a look. First we need to, uh, to get the ship to turn. Things in KSP are not always uh, quick and a lot of action. Sometimes things take a little bit of work. All right, so that's good enough for now. We'll leave the ship like that. We'll go EVA and press tab for the inventory. Can put that clock away for a minute. And I'm actually also not very interested in Kerbal Engineer right now. So we equip the drill. Now I hope we can reach that from here. No, that would have been too easy. So we let go of the ship. RCS. Let's turn that overlay off. And let's see if we can get out of there. There we go. Careful there, little man. Alright. 
actually see if we can stabilize him. There. Turn the RCS off for a minute. Inventory. Okay, what we want to do, see if we can attach this somewhere. H to attach. No, nope, that won't work yet. Is there no space where this will attach now? Did they change that? Oh, I didn't want to do that. Actually wanted to do this. Hang on, let's try that again. Docking port. Does that want to attach? I did see a green there for a sec. There we go. That, so that will work. And how about that one? Hang on. Let me zoom. Ah, yeah, it does work. There we go. So, basically, we want to attach that there. Now we can build stuff on there. And let's put the docking port here for the next ship. I actually wanted to put that further away. I actually wanted to put that there, but let's see where we can place it. Don't go too far away, Bob. Docking ports are fickle. I'm guessing it's too far, and that's why it's complaining. Let's get let's get Bob a little in a different spot. Very annoying. I would have thought I would have been further by now. Okay. Let's see. Right, try that again. Closer, I guess. There we go. Stay put. There we go. All right, another one on. back. Okay, now we had node attach. There we go. It's not close enough. Come on. 
loading the wrong way too. I don't like that abort is uh, is actually, excuse me, that was my chair. There you go, Rob, I apologized again. Come on, now I just want to put the docking port on there. There we go. Inventory. And change the node. Again, not close enough. Why did they have to use the escape key? There we go. Bingo! A little more work than I had hoped, but now we have an asteroid with a docking port. Okay, grab. Board. That is actually the center of mass of the asteroid. For some reason, they actually have that as an object inside the asteroid. I guess that's a unity uh, unity thing. So we have attached the docking port. We have attached uh, this is the docking port. We have attached the service node. Now we need to uh, get some more stuff here, which we can do in a uh, ship with a docking port. So we are actually going to move this one. So did it just crash? I think KSP just crashed. Mm, yep, it looks like KSP just crashed. Okay, give me a minute, I'll be right back. That's not going to be good for our work that we did. to force close it because it's uh, completely stuck. It is very, very stuck. I'll have to kill the process. One sec. KSP gone. Let's restart it. Curious where it uh, where it saved. Henry Kerman orbiting. We might be lucky. Oh yeah, we are lucky. But where is Halbury? Oh my goodness, he's inside the asteroid. <laughs> okay. I don't know if that will go okay. Never had this happen before. Guess there's a first for everything. Do we see him come out or do we see him die horribly? He's stuck. <laughs> He's stuck on the inside. Oh my god. That is uh, interesting. <laughs> I 
I've never had that before. Um, I think I know how to solve that. Hang on. We will give him some speed. And then we'll turn time skip on. And then you should just go through the asteroid as if it was never there. There we go. <laughs> okay. Never seen that before. That was interesting. Unfortunately, the docking port is gone again, so we have to do that again, but... Uh, Okay, escape from the center of the asteroid. Never seen that before. Okay, let's see. We still have our drill. I would have preferred not to have to do this again, but oh well. There we go. Docking port. And, of course, he's t way too low there. Resume. Okay. We will try that again. There we go. A lot quicker than before. We'll get Halbury back into the ship. We'll quick save, just in case uh, this happens again. Quick save. <laughs> and we'll try that again. So we will release. Yeah, now it does work. Uh, crew report and EVA report. Uh, we're already done, so there's not much point in doing that again. Let's have a look. Let's have a look what it would give us. Crew report. Zero science. I did take a surface sample from the uh, from the asteroid as well, so there's no use in that either, unfortunately. Target center of mass. Control from there. Okay, there we go. Just want to park it somewhere else. back on so we can see where we're going. Yep. That's not what I was looking for. There we go. Orbital chase. Chase is a good view. There we go. So let's dock this thing again. Move it a bit more that way. Now, at a certain point, you know, I think one crew report is maximum you can do in space before you get no, uh, no points for it. Okay. Now we already have the fine-tuned on, so... Now we just have to dock with this thing. There we go. Still a bit wobbly. Let's hope it attaches. finicky to uh, attach. I've seen people just ram it in there and for me that really hasn't helped. Let's see. Does it help? Go faster?
Okay. See if it helps to go a little bit faster. Don't think so, but you never know. <laughs> nope. Uh, I hate this. slow this time. Who knows? Might help. Are we on the era? Monoprop is fine. Ah, oh, but that's too close to the docking port. Man. slow, just capture it. Not having a lot of luck right now. Come on. Just attach. Sometimes those claws get bugged and then they don't do anything. I was kind of hoping that's not the case today. So, so far one KSP crash and one Kerbinaut caught inside an asteroid. Let's go real slow. Let's see if that will work. I can't go much slower than this without going backward. Yeah, there we go. Finally. <coughs> Good. Some distance away from the docking port, so that's good. So we can actually go back and uh, get some more stuff. So we leave uh, Halbury here. We'll go back to the space center. And then we go have a look at what we want to put on there. So we start, I think, maybe we should do this unmanned. We'll start with a probe core. And on top of that, we will we'll put a docking port. There we go. On that docking port, I want a cupola, but reversed. On the cupola, let's turn, turn the 
reaction wheels off because otherwise that's going to harm us on takeoff. So we want that. Then, let's see. Uh, let's see, how does that look? Uh, that looks pretty okay. One, two, and another docking port. Nope. I think that looks pretty nice. It's a nice uh, observation tower. So basically the idea here is that the probe will bring this bit up to the asteroid and we will dock this to the asteroid so then we actually have like a structure on top of the asteroid. That's the idea. Now we need to do make it work. So, this doesn't have a lot of control authority. We're already at 2300 kilos, so we need to see what we can do there. Let's see, put one of these on. Uh, this time I am going to bring Meg, Megjep, just because I'm lazy. Let's see how that will be if we put this engine on, 1600. More fuel. What about 2,000 in there? So I also want to deorbit it. So we'll put the, the tall tank on. Engine. That's that's perfect. And we want RCS, which is right there. RCS fuel, otherwise nothing's going to happen. That is the right size. Put that there. There we go. And since I'm going to be lazy, I am going to add my job. And just one will be enough, thank you. Okay, there we go. We need the power. on. There. And let's bring one or two batteries. There. And we will call this ugly ass missile. Because it, again, isn't very nice looking. But this should work. Yeah. Okay, this can decouple without leaving any junk there. So we should be able to put this uh, this tower on top of the asteroid, and we should be able to do it with this uh, this amount of fuel too. So that's good. All right, now we need to get this into orbit. So we grab another decoupler. Uh, that one is that a decoupler? Stack separator. Stack separator. Decoupler. Big one. No, one small one. There we go. And then we want to hide all that. So we put this on. There. Can we close it like that? Close fairing. There we go. That looks pretty good. Okay, I forgot one thing. It's not going anywhere if it doesn't have an antenna. So let's put a communitron on there. Just gonna rotate it a bit because I think it looks bad otherwise. So these don't have to deploy, they're in line, so we'll put those there. Four of them for good measure, so we have plenty of range. So this will be uh, this will be it. This is has, is what has to go up. So fuel tank. Let's look at the engine. Start with a skipper. Skipper 13533. Yeah, I like this. This should work. So we add docking, uh, the, not docking, launch clamps. Three of them. We stage like this engine and clamps. Fairing. If we do it like this, the fairing will just pop immediately. So 
and we'll just put the fairing with the decoupler. And then the last engine up there. That's fine. This should work. Okay. U-Haul. U-Haul will bring this up. Alright. Save. Launch. Okay. Well, it actually looks somewhat like a real rocket. Let's abuse gravity turn again. There we go. Let's turn off the HUD. We don't really need that right now. Let's see if this actually will go to space. Actually doesn't look all that bad right now. It just looks like a flying bottle rocket. Or at least a flying bottle. There we go. It's going. Turn that off. There. Nice cinematic. Just hope the damn thing doesn't explode on me. into orbit. Have you tried the uh, gravity turn yet, Rob? is to, to turn prograde on your apoapsis and just burn with the map open so you can see uh, once you got to get into space. <coughs> but it's not uh, the easiest thing, I, I know. The thing is, once you get past the, uh, like the hump where you actually have some maneuver nose and you can go EVA and get surface samples. Once you get past that point, the, uh, it goes a lot quicker. You can't see the symbols yet? You mean on the navigation uh, HUD? Like uh, like these, these symbols? That's odd. You should, you should be able to see those. First stage is nearly uh, nearly gone. So this time we'll let uh, Mick Jeb do the uh, rendezvous. Maybe even the docking. Depends on what kind of mood I'm in.
I do time my launch. I would have should have done that in the light. It looks better. So, <clears throat> once we get this into space, uh, we will uh, also move it to the uh, to the asteroid and complete our first part of the uh, relay station. Nice viewing tower to look at Kerbin from. Only 17 million meters away. So, 65 nearly there, slowly getting to the edge of space. So one disadvantage of using uh, mods like this, uh, ascent is optimal, it's it's really, you know, you can't do it much better on your own. The only problem is you need some patience before the damn thing is in space, because we still have five kilometers to go. Okay, have a look at the, uh, the data. It has used 3,500 delta V right now, which is not entirely optimal. I've seen 34, but if you you need a slightly more powerful engine for that, then it'll go a little faster up, and uh, it'll shoot into space a little quicker than than it does now. So now we do a lot of coasting, whilst it tries to keep the apoapsis at uh, 80 kilometers, so it'll just, you know, give like slight burns to keep the uh, apoapsis up whilst it uh, slowly coasts to space. Four kilometers to go. Uh, I wish it went quicker, it just doesn't. Maybe I can do the, uh, okay, I could probably use physics warp. Hey. Someone needs to put, make that close button work. Let's see if physics warp will work. It will, that's good. Make it a little quicker. Physics warp, there we go. I should have thought of that sooner. Okay. There we go. Now the probe still has a connection with KSC, a straight connection. Straight line. Yep, there we go. So as you can see, there's a connection, well, which is interesting because KSC is here, so it's kind of going through the planet. That's okay for now. We're nearly out 
into space. Let's start speed it up a bit. 400, 300, 200, 100, there we go. We are in space. Now MechJet will take over, as you see. Maneuver node. MechJet deploys the uh, solar panels and a very small burn to circularize. There we go. And now I'm really hoping that those antenna I put on there are powerful enough. Signal strength is a lot less because <coughs> the signal is actually being bounced over to communication satellites back to Kerbin, uh, to the KSC. So I only use one ground station, so I actually had to put some, uh, some stuff up there to uh, be able to fly satellites normally, which was a bit of a pain, because I also have them uh, around MUD, and I also have one around... Uh, Minmus, or a couple around Minmus, Constructor. So actually this is uh, our target now. Because of the craft being attached to it, it changed icon and name. But that's where we have to go. So we set target. Now with the magic of MechJeb, what we just did uh, automatically, or manually, we will do now automatically, which is uh, very easy kind of takes the fun out of it, but uh, well, you saw I could do it myself. Let's let the computer do what it's good at, C calculate stuff. Okay, so ready for the burn to go there. We'll burn about half our delta V, which is fine, because that means we need about, I think it was about 300 to, uh, to match our speed, so that's fine too. We'll be fine. less power than the other engine, so it's, uh, the burn takes a little bit longer. Okay, the idea for this relay station is that um, since I only have one ground station on Kerbin, uh, quite some time it will not be turned towards the outer planets. So ships that are pretty far away uh, won't be able to reach base, which means that if there's no crew on board, they are not controllable. And uh, that's not a good thing. Like for instance, Let's see if we can find it. Here we have one going to Duna, manned, so no problem. But I actually lost the craft, which is up there, ELU probe, because I didn't realize the antenna wouldn't reach. Your ship won't launch, engine won't burn. Mm, you have a probe core on there? Find 
tune, create small burn, execute to go closer. Actually, that didn't quite work. Remove all nodes. Create 0.1, execute. <laughs> Actually, the burn to close is, uh, you know what? How far away are we? 384. We'll just do it like this. Match velocities at closest approach. Execute. We'll do this slightly different. Pod, tank, and engine. Does the ship have power? Because if you don't have power, it won't burn either. Did you wait too long for it to... Uh, to start? I don't know. Antenna are not strong enough, so we kind of lost this ship. We don't have, uh, see, no coverage. Well, that sucks. Okay, so this is a write-off, basically. Let's uh, warp to there. Let's first abort node. We are going to make this into a burning Inferno, let's at least have some fun with it. Add maneuver. Let's uh, burn this thing. Because it won't have enough. There we go. Alright. Execute next. Doesn't even do that, does it? Let's see when we have reach again. Smaller tanks of what? There we go. Now we have a connection again. Oh man, we are just out of range. That really sucks. Curb in the KSC. It's just, just too far. Alright. Well, this one is a write-off, unfortunately. So we'll have to put some a different antenna on there. It's just too far away. I just put the uh, the smallest antenna on, and it's just not uh, not within range, which is really a shame because we were really really close to making that. But oh well, that's life. We'll uh, modify the things a bit. First of all, we'll get it into space a little quicker. Put a bigger engine on it. Okay, that should do it. Time warp. There we go. Fireworks! It was not meant to go there. I'm surprised how long it's holding out, actually. Is coming in with uh, 3,000. Oh, we're actually, if we don't burn up, we're actually going to go around. You're kidding me, it's not going to burn up. Well, I'm not going to wait around for that. Oh, hearing me, can't exit right now because we are in the atmosphere. Come on. Can I go to Space Center? You are in flight. Set you back to the last save. Nope. I don't want to just skip my... Uh, 
my mistake there. It's just unfortunate, but it happens. Okay. Go up again. Come on, I want to see this thing burn. There we go. There's the heat again. I'm surprised it actually survived that uh, pass through the atmosphere. The funny thing is if you try to do this on purpose, land something without a heat shield, it will just about always explode. And uh, I built some crazy contraption and it's actually going to come down in, a, in just about one piece. Yep, that is ridiculous. So this is going to be a very expensive dart, which is going into the water at uh, close to Mach 1. And bye-bye. <laughs> All right. Let's go to the Space Center. Yep, I know. Uh, no, no reversion. We're just going to do this again. Yeah, I'm sorry. You know, it's... One of those things, it happens. It's a uh, lesson learned, bigger antenna. So, we go back to this contraption. I was also not very pleased with how fast it went up, so we're actually going to change that one out. I'm gonna put a, nope, not that one. Put another fuel tank under there. Put a mainsail under there, that will set fire to the thing. Take this antenna off, and we are putting a one of those. That will definitely work. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. There we go. Small change should go pretty quick now. Let's try that again. This should go a lot faster, I hope. Let's check the staging. We want the engine to be there with the clamps. This is fine, that's fine. Why? Yep, acceleration is somewhat better. Yeah, I did. This is gravity turn. It's just uh, actually a lot going quicker now because uh, the engines are more powerful. Actually a little bit too powerful probably. So uh, that's why it's going up really quick now. I 
I didn't feel like waiting that long again. Thing is, the, the I think the the best tower uh, thrust to weight ratio is about. 1.3, 1.4, and I think this is actually 2. So it just, you know, it just speeds off. Which in the lower atmosphere isn't all that great because you uh, have, it's like hitting a wall. Okay, so we are actually nearing the uh, 80k already. a slightly different uh, ascent than with the other uh, missile. Much quicker into space. Don't know how... Yeah, see we have a much larger burn now. So we will burn... but I think net burn isn't that bad. Let's see what it's it said it used. Okay, it said to use 22, but add this, that's 33, but 34, 3500 total. It's about the same. A lot quicker, though. Oh, let's tell MegJet it can auto stage, so I don't have to do that manually. Set a Stargate maneuver planner. Uh, plan a home and transfer. Create and execute. And we will be on 162. That's good enough. There we go. And this stupid thing didn't open the chutes. That, not the chutes, the uh, solar arrays. to do it manually. Extend. Well, at least one's out.
right nearly there. Tune, please. Create. Yep. Execute next. So in two hours we are actually going to uh, burn again to get closer because that burn wasn't that great. And these three here are actually retired asteroid catchers. So that one is what brought that one into orbit. And we have two more. There's one here named Jebediah and one here, Valentina. They're all empty. I couldn't get them sort of in a zero inclination with uh, the amount of fuel that was in them. So this was actually attempt number three when I finally had enough fuel to get the thing to be uh, circularized. Okay, distance is now a hundred kilometers. Can we try it again? No, that's not going to work. But there is other ways. Let's turn prograde. Let's do this manually. Alright, so we have distance 102. Turn RCS on. We hit caps lock for fine maneuvering, and then we just go forward. That's more, so we go back, back, back. 73, 65, 62, yep, 60 is about the mar maximum. Let's go left. Yep, we go closer. Just keep on going left until we reach, like, the optimum there. 9, 5... Two, oh, two. Two is about it. So what can we still do? We did forward, we did left. Let's go up. No, go down. There we go. Go down. 2.5. I can live with that. <coughs> Match velocities. Create and execute. I really think RCS is the easiest way to get... Uh, get your encounters to match, because you're going to get, uh, it gets so much easier that way. Otherwise you're constantly messing with maneuver nodes. Okay, we should be able to see, let's see, burning, so it should be from there, I'm guessing, where is it? Six minutes to burn. Do we see it? There it is. Zooming by. So that's good. We'll turn SAS on. Put the nose nose towards the target. There we go. We will burn towards the target. There. So the two vectors aren't exactly touching, otherwise we'd crash into it. So we'll just do another one of these. 
basically 45 minutes we will be quite close. And let's quick save just for the fun of it. Just to be sure. Alright. There is our asteroid. And there is the ship. And let's see, where's the docking? There's the docking port. Great. Let's see if we can select that. There. There we go. Docking port set as target. Control from here. I'm not in the mood to do this, so I'm actually going to tell MacJab. Please dock for me. Now I just hope it doesn't burn through all the R's, all the monoprop here, because MacJab is not conservative with monoprop. There we go, the structure going up on our asteroid. save just in case the whole thing decides to crash on me and there we go we have our little observation tower installed on the asteroid now we do control from here, and we want to point that thing towards Kerbin. So that would mean that when you uh, have a Kerbal in there, and he's looking out, he'll be looking straight at Kerbin. Of course, I think we'll have to move that one because that doesn't look too great. Should have, yep, the curb in behind. I think that's pretty cool. So who says asteroids are useless? So basically, next thing to do will be to uh, install, I think it needs power. So we need to put a solar panel on there or a uh, fuel cell. It needs antennas, which I was planning to put on there somewhere too. I don't know where yet, but it's going to come on there. Um, don't think I'll be doing that today, though. It's starting to get quite late, and I do need to work tomorrow. So the last thing to do would be to uh, deorbit the uh, the ship that got us here. We'll leave that one on control. Control from there. We'll leave the radial in on so that we'll keep that aimed like that. We will switch to this vessel, move back so we get rid of that. We will have the orbit on, turn retrograde. There we go. And we will start our burn down to Kerbin. There we go. 7,000.
Okay, well, that will definitely burn up. All right. Let's uh, burn this, this useless, now useless hauler. It's a shame, really, because it's it's got a docking port, so we could still use it, but let's get rid of it for now. can always build another one. There we go. Okay, it's going into the atmosphere. Let's see if this becomes a lawn dart as well. observation post. Uh, antennas will come another day. So uh, with that I uh, really thank you for watching and uh, if you had liked this, you know, great. If you don't, you want to see something else, tell me. I can have a look if, uh, if it's possible. So have a good evening, sleep well if you're going to bed, if you don't, have fun and uh, see you next time. Thanks. Ah. <sighs>